yes we have already gone through the introduction of hibernate in our uh, previous session so now let's get into the hands on practice of hibernate okay so before we go into the programming part there are some files which you need to be downloaded one go to hibernate.org go to hibernate orm since we are dealing with hibernate orm inside hibernate orm go to the latest stable version whatever version that is uh, by the time i am recording this session it is 5.5 if you are having more than that also it's okay here you will be having a zip archive file okay just go there and download the zip file i have already downloaded it so i'll directly go to the location where i have downloaded okay so yep here it is uh, so whatever i have downloaded my zip file i have extracted over here so here the main concentration is only on this lib file okay just go to the lib file and go to the required file so you have some jars over here okay these jars are the important jars which we need to concentrate on so this is one hibernant loading so i am using intellij but if you are using eclipse i think you already know how to add external jar files to the project just go to build path libraries external jars and then add all your external jars so inside the required folder whatever the jar files are there just add all these jar files into the build path okay so intellij if you want to do it just go to file inside file you will have something called as project structure libraries add a plus mm, java so inside java search for your file so i have it here inside lib inside required so these are my jar files so i'll add all these jar files done okay so all my jar files are added and i have uploaded it and there is one other jar file which i need to add that is my database connecting jar file that will be my mysql connector so mysql connector also you can find it in the first link itself just type in mysql connector on google the first link whichever you get you will have the connector just go and download the jar file for it okay <coughs> till now i think there are no doubts so let me go here and let me even add my mysql jar so mysql jar is also added and everything is done if you go to external jars you can see all the external jars which i have added over here okay oh. okay okay <coughs> so with the help of hibernate we will be creating a simple complete operations we will try to create a complete crud operation within this okay so now let me go to my source let me create a package and let this package and name it as entity so the question is hibernate dot entity okay hibernate is a separate package inside hibernate there is a package called entity so now the question is what do you mean by a entity entity means whichever java object you want to convert it into a database object that for that java object you will be giving a annotation called at the rate entity okay are we clear okay. to this point Yes, sir. Okay. So before yes, going sir. to that, there is something else. One very much important thing is session factory and session. There are two things. Okay. Session factory is the one which we required to create a session. So. first you need to have session factory 
if you have a session factory only a session can be required okay session factory is basically executed only once at the starting executed at the starting of the program be executed the reason why we are executing the starting of the program is it's a very heavy program and it takes lot of time time consuming is more okay for these two reasons we execute session factory only once that to at the starting of the program so once we are having a session this session is basically lightweighted less consumption of time and we can run it whenever we required okay and the most important part is this is not a thread since it is not a thread we don't deal it with objects got it that is the difference between a session factory and a session okay no okay i hope till now you are clear yes sir yes sir now inside my entity let me okay before going into entity this is my complete project right inside my source i need to create a xml file this xml file basically is called as the configuration file okay what is this configuration file this configuration file will connect your database java and hibernate okay you need to first configure your application to hibernate and the database so for that i'll create a file in eclipse you directly have a .xml extension but in uh, intellij we don't have a xml uh, direct xml configuration so i'll create it and the default name is hibernate.cfg.xml so basically this is the default uh, file name which we give for hibernate configuration file uh, this is the normal practice and the recommended practice so i suggest you people also to follow this if you give another name also it is not a problem but this is the recommended one okay i have created a file now this is my xml file okay inside this xml file i am simply copying and pasting this particular code and it is already telling me that it is a hibernate version framework is detected okay so let me go through this uh, xml file once so what is this file okay you will get this file on online okay there is nothing new over here you simply go to google type hibernate xml file for mysql you have a bunch of websites which will give you this file okay whatever the details you have you can directly copy it from here okay so that is not a thing to worry now just let us go through the xml file once let us see what are what are the things okay so first one this is an hibernate configuration file inside the hibernate configuration file first a session factory is been activated okay inside the session factory what is the first property the property is connection driver normally in our mysql class we used to write a mysql complete program with right? connection my connection dot java so that complete my connection dot java file is been reduced to one line okay with the configuration of the driver class we are just directly giving it here com dot mysql dot ca dot jdbc dot driver okay now over here we are giving a dot connection url so this will be my url connection the localhost one jdbc mysql one and my project my database name here my database name is project it can be anything as per your thing so the dialect so that di dialect over here is basically the one connecting mysql and the java okay this hibernate we normally said that it is a database independent means whether you write or whether you take any database basically our hibernate will not have any effect the reason why it will not have any effect is because of the dialect okay so this is the dialect the latest dialect for 
hibernate and mysql if you go to google and suppose if you type something like hibernate oracle dialect then you can see for oracle any version you have this dialect for oracle version 9 you have this dialect so the only thing you need to do is instead of this line you change it with your respective database that is the only thing you do at that time all the connections or all the changes or all the programs which you are making it will automatically be redirected to that particular database so you already know this connection dot username connection dot password connection dot pool size is basically not even required so nothing to worry about this it is there as a default connection dot pool size is 3 so i'm just keeping it as 3 the number of times it will retry to connect that is called as pool size okay so now over here the current session context so i am making it as a thread okay now this show sql what is this show sql and true we will see once we go to the program and we will see what is this also for now what i'll do is i'll simply comment this out we will see what it does later okay now let me go to my hibernate.entity file let me create a class and let this class name be app so this will not be having any kind of okay instead of app i'll make it as users because i want my table name as users so i'll make it as users so inside this users i'll create int id or let me say user id string username string password string first name string last name okay these are the properties of our user class for this particular thing let me create a table in my mysql okay so here i am telling to create a table let the table name be users and then let's start writing our values so let this be user id let me make it user underscore id and this user underscore id is my primary key and it is auto incremented every time i write something okay now so after this my next thing is username let me extend this okay yep okay after username let me make it as password after password we have our first name first underscore name next it is last underscore name we have our values this is our table okay i am creating this with the help of the workbench then i am creating my apply this will be the code which is my workbench giving me apply done done now if you go over here we have a table this key over here will extend our table now if you see if you see over here there are no values okay i hope till now there is not a problem how to create a table yes any problem on till now how to create a table on our workbench no, no sir okay good now here we are in our hibernate program so this is the table right so this is our table which we created in our database to understand that this is the table we are telling our hibernate that this is the entity okay just note down of this package this package is coming from persistence entity okay 
so to make it more clear i want to give the name of the table also so i am giving it a at the rate table and i am giving a name for this table i am just giving the same name which i have given in my database okay so inside this this is the primary key so to identify the primary key i am giving the id got it so the next one is the column name so for every variable i am just giving a column name so that there will not be any confusion even if you are not giving the column name also hibernate will try to understand it but it may make some errors we are not sure whether it will make it or not to basically not have a benefit of a doubt we will simply give the names so this will be our username and here this will be our password then this will be my first underscore name let me surround this with column name last underscore name okay till now everything is clear i am assuming clear sir good okay now let me just go to the package let me create a class okay what is this class the class name is create okay and i don't want this to be in the entity i want this to be in the hibernate so i'll just move it to hibernate package okay so this will basically consist of a main method so inside this main method what should we need to have so that is a question we already got to know from our explanation in notes that first any hibernate program should have a session factory then it should have a session so first let me create a session factory so let us say session factory if you see here i am importing it from org dot hibernate and i'll name this as factory which is equal to new i need to configure my session factory okay when you are configuring the session factory just be careful there are many configurations okay configure from org dot hibernate dot cfg so configuration will have a method called configure you are configuring it from the configuration file dot xml okay so till now i hope everyone is clear after this what we need to do is we are configuring everything is okay but from which class do you want the entities to be present we are having all the classes present in users dot java so always remember to add the annotated class say it as users dot class after everything is done then you build your session factory so this is a very very important step okay first you import your session factory then you configure it with the help of a configure method from your xml file after configuring your hibernate you will say from which class you must access its entities after accessing its entities you will build your session factory got it yes sir now let me go to my session once my session factory is done i'll go to my session so session session is equal to there is nothing to new and all over here we'll directly go to factory because session is basically given by the session factory and we'll simply get our current session okay 
now our session is ready now basically what we have to do is we have to try something and we have to get some data so for that we will be creating a try block and we will be having a finally block in this finally block what i'll do is first i need to close this session after all the things are done then at the end i need to close my session factory okay so this is very important because it may lead to garbage collection if not so to reduce the minimum size of the program we will close it after everything is done so whether your program runs successfully or whether it will not run successfully the one thing we need to do is we need to close the session and close the factory so we will put it in the finally block because whether it is will giving me any errors or whether the program is running successfully the one thing my finally block does is it gets executed so now inside my try block what all should be there first important you need to create something so create the object basically first we need to create the object object of the entity class after creating of the object you must start a transaction okay here transaction means nothing but a process okay you must start a transaction after starting a transaction you must execute or run the transaction i simply say run after that you must commit the transaction so these are the four steps in hibernate okay this is the only thing you do first thing is you need to create an object so your object is basically users user is equal to new user but the problem over here is assume that you are giving some data so to give some data you need to have a constructor so let me create a constructor over here so let me go to generate a constructor i don't want int id because int id is automatically generated done so now we are having something so after this let me put on some get run setter methods also let's see if it is that is needed or not that is secondary let me put on all my get run setter methods and to retrieve the data and all simply let me put on my to string method also okay so now we'll go here so here what should i give the first thing is username is username only Okay, let me put new spelling properly. Now we'll go back over here. Okay, users, good. So username. I'll put password as password only. I'm giving the same data for first. and then let me go to last so this will be my object for my class okay now let me start a transaction to start a transaction we'll go to session dot don't get too much tensed about it this go to the begin transaction okay after beginning the transaction you will simply say session dot so here what do you need to do what do, what do you need to do for this this is the important part here basically you need to save the data so search for something save okay you have an option called save or update directly you have an update option you can simply put save okay you can save the object that was your users okay when you save this users what happens is automatically your object will be saved to database after everything is done you will say session dot get transaction dot commit 
that's all your program is done now you need to do is run the create method create class once your creation has started done 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 now if you see over here you have a line right insert into user this we didn't do this is basically the sql query this sql query is automatically given by our hibernate the reason why it is showing this is because of this line in our xml here we are given show sql as true because of this line we have our the query it has been given now let us go to my bench and run this now if you see over here user id is one username password first last is that the same thing i have given over here yes or no yes sir so that's all it will automatically give you everything got it yes sir that is yes, the beauty sir. of hibernate you don't need to do anything it will only do everything so you may have a question so we created our table over here what is the use of hibernate okay i created the table just to show this let me drop this table okay there is no table now if I, even if i run this you will get an error okay the error is doesn't exist let's go to our xml file and if you have a statement over here okay this statement basically will create as well as update okay if you put only create it will change every time every time you create it will if you run a program it will create a new table but if you put it as update one it will first time it will create and the next time it will update the data okay now i have uncommented this i have not even created the table over here there is no table over here now i'll simply run the create method done now if you see over here first it is creating the table with all these values none of them is given by us it is only creating everything then it is inserting into users now if you go to workbench and click on refresh all now you can see that there is a table so you see here even the data is been added only problem with this kind of using is here the primary key whatever key we have given the auto incrementation we have to do it manually because uh, java doesn't know about the auto incrementation for that also there is a way but it gets too complicated so i'll not go in that much but this is what we do got it yes now if you see now now once i refreshed it, it is automatically giving me one so i'll go here into my create dot java file i'll change everything now okay let me put it monish itself then password let me be password first name let it be monish last name be pp now if i run this since the given command is update inside our incrementation method now if you see it will automatically put to monish pv password username as monish there is no changes required everything is basically done by our hibernate itself got it yes sir me copy this whole class instead of doing it again and again let's go to my hibernate create a new class and let the class name be retrieve okay control c control v 
instead of create let me make it retrieve so this is basically retrieving data from our database so for this i don't need to give any inputs so i must have a default constructor so let me go here let me generate a default constructor with no values we have our default constructor with no values so let me simply delete everything so i have a default constructor with no values because i am not giving any input to add transaction begin is common creating the object is common now i have to run the transaction before it was saving but now it is retrieving so basically i must get so what should i get i should get data from my user class and basically i must provide the number the serial number of which data i want so i'll put it two over here means i must get the second row after everything is done after committing everything and all i'll simply add this to users is equal to this after committing everything i'll simply write a print statement and put users so that whatever i get from here that is saved into users object and i am printing that object now let me run this retrieve retrieve is running look at here we got our data so when we write a program to retrieve the only thing we did is we wrote get user dot class from user dot class set get the second one so but internally what hibernate did is it wrote this complete command okay it wrote this complete command and it gave me this answer so id second one it was monish password first name last name that is the same thing we have over here got it yes sir yes sir now let me create another class over here here let the class name be update let me go to retrieve copy this go to update paste it okay so instead of retrieve let me make this as update so even when i am updating also how do i update is the question so first i am getting the data i need to update this so how do i update it whatever i get on users i'll simply say users dot i'll call upon my setter method so whatever i want to set i'll set it over here so let me say that this is what my username i want it to be now i'll simply print this so now what is happening my username basically it should get updated let's go here run this uh, username is not getting updated what is happening let's go back over here set username first i am getting the session after that set username commit i don't need this print statement let me check if there is any method over here for this there is no set method or save method or update method so basically it is the get method itself users dot class comma second one serialization is done once the serialization is done go to set and i need to set this then comment this sorry it was in retrieve i need to run my update method okay so updating is done go to my workbench now you see here there is an update got it yes sir control a control c 
create a new class let the class name be delete control a control b change the class name to delete here i am getting the some data after getting that you search for an option called delete or else you will get a direct option here itself begin transaction after beginning the transaction you go to select users dot class you select which one you want to delete after that go to users is equal to this then you must delete this the users dot you'll have a method called delete no let's go here let's search for a method called delete yes you have a method called delete over here and you will pass an object so basically you need to configure your object so users is equal to session dot get users dot class and i want to delete my second one now session dot delete users done run the delete method done now go to your workbench restart this now you see my second entry has been deleted that's all that is how simple hibernate is got it yes sir yes that's sir that's all for today that's all for today